Well, hey there. Welcome to the Kim Constable podcast. Nobody cares. Work harder. Now, you probably think that I sound a little bit sleepy today on the podcast, and that is because it is actually 7.30 a.m. whenever I am recording this. And the reason why I'm recording it so late is because we have just come through, or so early, should I say, actually, but so late as in the podcast is actually going out today. But we have just come through an incredible five-day body makeover challenge, which then opened the Sculpt and Shred program at the end of it. And quite simply, I have been working my ass off for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I'm completely exhausted and I'm overworked. Um, I would love to say I'm underpaid, but I'm definitely not. But um, we have been working pedal to the metal and I've been just falling a little bit behind, I have to be honest, on my regular tasks. And the podcast is one of them, although we still have managed to put out some incredible content for you. I really hope that you got a chance to listen to the five day body makeover catch up um, lives masterclasses last week that we decided to put out in the podcast. I know that everybody's been writing to me and saying just how much they enjoyed them. So hopefully you are one of those people. But what have I got for you today? And why am I talking to you with my 7.30am sleepy voice? Well, a couple of weeks ago in the Butt Camp group, I hosted a live Q&A with my very own trainer, Mr. Mark Getty. Now, Mark is um, uh, an Irishman through and through. Many people in America say that they find it very hard to understand him. And he does talk very fast. But even if... um, Um, He talks fast. His information that he provides is absolutely incredible. And so we wanted to bring this Q&A to you in a podcast today. And if I'm honest, even though the information is brilliant, it kind of saved me recording a podcast as well this week, which is why you guys are getting the Q&A here. But um, I know that you're really, really going to enjoy it. And Mark really does drop some absolutely incredible knowledge bombs upon us. And he is just one of the most experienced trainers that I have ever come into contact with in all of my years training. And he has 22 years experience and hundreds of titles. I think he is literally, well, I don't think it's hundreds, but I think it's like a lot of titles under his belt. And I just know that you're going to absolutely Absolutely love what he has to say. So enjoy this QA with Mr. Mark, and I will chat to you guys again at the end. Hello, everybody. Hope you're all Mark, keeping well. Mark, uh, just so people um just or just to kick off, really, as head judge of the competition, um yes. obviously you have many, mm-hmm. many years in judging bodybuilding competitions and also competing in bodybuilding competitions. Yeah. Do you want to give us like a two minute rundown of your achievements? Yeah, and well, your experience? yeah, I've been training for twenty five years, been competing and involved in bodybuilding for twenty plus twenty plus years. Uh done my first show probably about nineteen years ago. Um, judging shows the last 15 plus years as well. Uh, titles include multiple Mr. Northern Ireland, Mr. Ireland, Mr. Britain, Mr. Europe, Mr. World, um, and just basically a pro bodybuilder as of 2014. So that's just a quick rundown. I think of 48 titles all in all, including amateur and uh, pro. Um, still not retired, still banging on, although Kim more times than not tried to get me to hang the trunks up, but I'm just not there yet. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, so judge shows uh, as far as regional, national, international, so a fair experience in that, basically different federations, so different criteria, um, and just basically sticking to the scenario as much as possible. So when Kim asked me to get involved in this, um, it was a no-brainer, um, just to bring a wee bit of experience, I suppose, in the light so that you guys are judged fairly. The criteria is made fairly in relation to the programs and everybody gets a fair crack at the whip. And obviously there's no bias because one of the things as a competitor that pisses me off more than anything else is biased judges. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you know, it's one of them things to be able to take bias out of the equation and give you all a fair run down, especially the amount of hard work, dedication it is to get on stage. I believe you, you should be judged fairly and therefore, uh, you know, judge properly, not just we run through in a quick you know, run down of it, just basically locked out. And that's why what we've done behind the scenes of the butt camp is basically read up a set of criteria uh, that me and Kim have come up with so that all judges follow it and therefore all the results will be perfect, so to speak. Yeah, Mark, one of the things that people always say, and I really would love you to address this before we get into some questions. And by the way, guys, if you have questions for Mark, write them in the comments now and I'm going to be going through the questions and adding them onto the screen for Mark to answer. So Mark, one of the things that comes up, which I really would love to address is sometimes in the competitions we have people who say um, that 
uh, you know, it's not fair. Oh, this person, you know, Photoshop their pictures or, oh, this person has amazing abs and they're definitely going to win or, but the, usually the one that comes up, not all the time, but sometimes we get people who say, you know, it's, it's not fair because this person's younger, this person's older, this person had this advantage over me. What would you say as a judge? Like, and I, what I always say is you can never, listen, you can't pull the wool over judge, over no, judges. Yeah. Eyes. Mark has seen thousands of bodies over 25 years. Tell us why that it is impossible for someone to cheat or game the system. At the end of the day, Photoshop and we can tell. The fact that the dates are on it means we can tell easily what you are doing. Lighting camera tricks, going towards the camera, uh, going backwards from the camera, et cetera, et cetera, won't, won't fool us. You know, we can, we're, we're judged and we're professional and telling uh, between the two pictures. Do you know what I mean? Um, having visible abs isn't a guarantee to win. Basically, in the nutshell, this is all over body transformation. Certain people have certain characteristics that are going to be better than others. Certain people are going to have other characteristics. What we're looking for is the full package. And at the end of the day, the one thing people can't cheat is hard work. If you stick to the system, you stick to the plan, it will show in your results. There's no way about it. There's no quick fixes in this game. It's just dedication, hard work, consistency and showing up. And basically, your transformation photos are going to show that. And that's what we're looking for. If you're in shape and you've got great transformation photos, then you've done the work. And that's basically bottom line to what we're looking for. You know, I've sat in a judging panel, like I said, in international shows, judging between possibly marginal differences and you know we've always got it right like I can say every shoe I've been judged on every shoe I've judged I can definitely say the judges have got it right so there's no room for error and like I say if the judges are at a proper level they're trained in this thing they're trained to look at the differences they're trained to spot the criteria that's why the criteria is so important if we adhere completely through the criteria you ain't going to pull the wheel over eyes you can try but realistically you're just going to be marked down for trying at the end of the day it's bulletproof the majority of the season wins and like we've judged the last few butt camps I was one million percent happy with the outcome the winners were definitely the winners the runners up were definitely the runners up and I have looked at the minute on all the results coming through and I already know who's going to do what just by looking at the pictures. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You can tell who does what. It's as simple as that. Do you know what I mean? Photos don't lie, especially when they're taken properly. And that's what we look for. Presentation is important. If you don't put work into presentation, unfortunately, whether it's a stage or a photo shoot, you might get marked down. But again, that's the individual's fault. That's not the fault of anybody else who has done everything in their power to win. At the end of the day, it's a competition and you do whatever it takes to win. It's as simple as that. Yeah, that is actually a really good point because we did have some really horrendous photograph <laughs> entries. Yeah. You know, I was like, how could you have thought this is okay? Some of them were like super pixelated. Some of them were really fuzzy. Some of them like you know, people were way down here and their after photo and away up here and their before photo. And it was like, this is for $10,000, yeah. you know? It's, you know it's, it's astounding. Presentation is just as important at the end in the training. You know, it's part of the training. Like if, if somebody walks on stage with muscle and dieted well and he just flops about on the stage, he's not going to show off his physique to the end. And as a result, I've seen guys, even as high up as the universe, getting down place because they aren't showing off their, their physique properly. You know, lack of tan, lack of oils, you know, maybe the wrong trunk color. Believe it or not, these things all play a massive part in the day. And, you know, when you're doing a, when you're doing a competition for £10,000 or $10,000, the most important thing you can do is to get your fucking photos correct and, and make a make a dent in presentation so that you actually look presentable at the end of the day because that's how you're judged you know yes that is it's so true and actually there's a question come up here about judging so i'm going to go to it first before i go to one yeah. of the other questions for you if you're happy to take a few questions today hopefully you are um and guys just so you know the reason why um People always ask me, you know, part of the reason why I'm so knowledgeable of bodybuilding. And actually, one one of the things is obviously I'm, I'm an avid reader and researcher, and whatever. I'm an information junkie. But I say to people, like, I have spent, like, the last three years, I've spent five hours a week for the last three years with Mark, with maybe per week, maybe, I've had maybe two weeks off, maybe three weeks a year. So maybe 49 weeks of a year for three years. I'm actually going to do the math on that. So that's five multiplied by 49 multiplied by three. Mark and I have spent 735 hours together. That's a lot, Mark, isn't it? Um, in the last three years. And I literally, all we do when we train is talk about bodybuilding and shows and muscle fibers and muscle growth. And, muscle, and of course, then we ha rehash a lot of stuff sometimes, but um, that just Mark's knowledge is really on another level. So just wanted to give him an extra wee bit of kudos there. Not that he needs it because Mark, you're legendary in the Sculpted Vegan community. Right. So um, Annabelle Harrington is asking a question. Um, 
She says, I'm curious how you judge the results when individuals could have lost the same amount of weight or measurements, but the results look so different based on body types. I'm actually going to put this on the screen, Mark. Can you see that? Now it's covering most of your head on the screen now. Um, so for instance, a 20 pound loss on someone who is five foot five would look so different from a 20 pound loss yeah. on someone who is six foot. I'm really curious about this. Yeah, good question. Um, it, it basically goes down to look at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're in a bodybuilding show. So basically what your main method of critique is the mirror for yourselves, you know, so we're judging it based on vision, based on what we see. Do you know what I mean? So numbers, what the weight people have lost, the height of people, the weight of people, that's all irrelevant in the scale of things. It doesn't matter what your body fat percentage is. It doesn't matter how much weight you've lost. It doesn't matter what height or weight you are on the stage or on the photo shoot. All that matters is how you look, and that's what we judge it. We judge it by look. So, what that although people might have lost the same amount of weight or weight per se, certain muscle groups will look different. So, maybe a girl that we're looking, for example, the butt camp. The most emphasis I would place on people in the butt camp is from the back. Why? Because the emphasis is placed on the glutes. So, what I look for when I'm judging is a nice continued definition or transformation all over from head to toe, um, and then basically some muscle mass basically being added. So, nicer around her shoulders. Maybe nicer around her arms, a wee bit of glute definition, a wee bit of quad definition, and obviously a wee bit of abdominal definition. So it's very, very hard to find somebody that are two people that have done all these things, that have ticked all these boxes. Do you know what I mean? Usually one or two people can tick most of them, but there's always one or two uh, individuals that are ticking one or two, and that's how we whittle them out. So we basically whittle them out by what sort of definition they've made and what sort of changes or transformation has been the biggest. You have to remember, somebody may have lost 20 pounds, another person may have lost 20 pounds, but who looks most transformed? That's right. what it basically boils down to. It's not about weight loss. So regardless of how much weight they've lost, it's who looks to have made the biggest changes. And again, that's where presentation can come down to too, because one girl that's lost 20 pounds, another girl that's lost 20 pounds, one girl put effort and uh, the posing or effort into the picture, the other girl doesn't. That can that can definitely sway the judges as well, you know. So there's so many variables when we're judging, and so many variables we take into account. But for me personally, the biggest thing for me is who has made the biggest change. What picture does it make me go, wow, wow, that's amazing? Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that wow factor, you know. Yeah. And whenever I see it, I know it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's yeah, basically 100%. the way I would judge it, you know. And that's a really good point, Mark. Actually, because a lot of, what a lot of people forget is this is a competition that of which we're going to be posting the photos all over the internet of the winners and the top ten. So you know, we we want as a business to be posting photos that are you know that are beautiful, that are really well presented, that are you know that that look you can see the transformation that really look like people have put effort into them. Yeah. If they can look a bit, you know, the photos that we present to the world are are photos that represent my company and so we only ever think that are high standard yeah yeah 100 percent. and so we we so one thing we do always reward in this in this company is effort but for me it always went it, it was a kind of it goes without saying that someone would put effort into their tan and their hair and their posing and their lighting and their you know obviously you know i don't expect everyone to go out and get freaking studio lights to be like me yeah. here in the studio but at least to try and set it up as well as you possibly can and pose as well as you possibly can so that you find it hard. You're like plants, bushes. Yeah, I've, I've put a charger in the phone. I'm so happy. I'm trying to balance the phone and the charger. So bear with me here. We're getting that's there. That's all right. You look like, turn it sideways. Yeah, that's me. Turn, turn it sideways. Let me see. No, I'm upside oh, down. Yeah. Here you are. Oh, okay. that's us. There we go. <laughs> that's better. I told you I'm shade at this. I don't want to keep. Uh, I don't want to keep talking because I did want you just to talk a bit about the competition because obviously we're about to announce the top ten. You guys are judging at the minute. I'm not actually a judge this year. We have uh, nine other judges. So let me take a few questions, Mark. Because we do have a lot of questions from people who um, are wondering what to do after the uh, after the after the program. Okay, so Janice Charters is saying, I just joined the Sculpted Shred last night. Welcome, Janice. I'd like to ask about reaching failure for a beginner. I've been working out at home for butt camp and just, and just buying a home gym. How do I ensure I can progress into a situation where I am really reaching failure as I don't think I'll be mentally able to get there form, oh, from the get-go? From the get-go. Listen, at the end of the day, I kind of disagree with that in a way because I do believe that from the get-go, 
your whole motivation, if, if your motivation is to get in shape and if your motivation is to make results, uh, this isn't easy. It requires a commitment. It requires consistency. So if what you want to do is get results, then it requires 100% dedication from the get-go. And for me personally, I would begin into every workout with the mantra of breaking down as much muscle tissue as possible in order for it to grow. The only real way you can do this is by pushing yourself to the limit every session. You know, you are a beginner, so therefore pushing yourself to the limit will actually be quite easy because you've never trained before. So this, in essence, won't be like what you see Kim doing on a daily basis with her training because she's obviously up a, a, a fair few levels. So your failure and Kim's failure, although will be similar, it just the only difference will be the weight a beginner uh, up to an intermediate, up to a, a master, so to speak, will always be able to put 100% effort and 100% intensity into every workout. So in my opinion, you should be able to go to failure. You should be able to train as hard as you personally can. And as long as you're asking yourself the question, every time you leave the gym, ask yourself, could I have done more? If the answer to that question is yes, then you're basically admitting to yourself, which is the right thing to do, that you could have trained harder. And it's basically a matter of being respons- taking responsibility for every workout if you could train harder, putting it in the next session, and that's how you advance. You know, if you consistently aim to work that bit harder every session, week in, week out, then you will gain. But in my opinion, yeah, by all means, you should be aiming for failure from the get-go in every compound exercise you're doing, or close to it. Obviously, if you're training on your own, you maybe that's don't want to go to failure in squats and get left at the bottom of a rack, but then stop one, potentially two reps from failure. You know, I mean, that's as good as anything if you haven't got a spotter or if you haven't got equipment that's safe to use. But at the same token, that shouldn't undermine you training to your full potential. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and that, that was my question. I was going to say, if somebody's training from home, well, first of all, Mark, can you define for people here who aren't just, aren't in the Sculpt and Shred program and don't yeah. really understand the concept of training to failure, can you explain that a little more, what that means? Failure basically means maximum muscle stimulation or maximal muscle effort. It means that basically that muscle is completely exhausted and therefore you are unable to do another rep with good form on your own, you know, and that's basically what it means. So it means if you're pushing in a bench press and you hit 10 and you could have went to 12 or 13, then obviously you didn't train to failure. The problem with not training to failure or close to failure is if your body is able to lift the weight comfortably, then it's never going to have that reason to go outside the comfort zone and therefore build muscle. So if you consistently day in, day out train in your comfort zone, you're never going to progress because you're not giving your body a reason to go any further. You're not giving it a reason to progress because it's quite capable of staying in its comfort zone for everything in life and remaining the same. So you need to push beyond the limits. And this is what we consider training to failure. There's also a concept of beyond failure, which will basically mean four reps. So that's where I would, in the videos with Kim, where I'm maybe giving her a hand to push out one or two extra reps whenever she is completely unable to do a rep unassisted. And that's just another way to stimulate maximum muscle. Yeah, yeah. And that should only be done really with an experienced you know, Basically, trainer. you need an experienced spotter and obviously on down the line. So the girl that's trained at home on her own, you will be quite content going to close to failure within a few reps and you'll definitely, definitely, as long as you follow all the variables properly, you'll definitely grow and you'll definitely get muscle out of it. Brilliant. And actually, and I just want to add in as well, like sometimes what people don't understand is you. there's a lot of things you can go to failure on yourself. So say you're doing... Yeah. Um, like say you're say you're doing uh, bicep curls for example you know yeah. people think whenever they can't whenever they can't lift it up to here anymore without good form then they fail and I said no no you haven't if you can kind of throw it up there and lower it with control and throw it and lower it with control it's whenever you yeah. can't lower it with control when your arms go boom when you have to throw That's it up brilliant. and your arms are coming down now you've reached failure when as yeah. long as you can get it up there and still move it your muscles are still moving. Even we half reps, we partial reps are still yeah. going. Like we, we have a big thing, Kenneth, and as you know, on hamstring day, that I'm making you do 10 partials at the end of a full step. Do 24 you know what I mean? so, reps of 100. Yeah, so they're still moving. Points. The hamstrings are still moving. Did you go, Mark's like, come on, come on, half reps, half reps. Ah, like 24 yeah. reps we do. So the first yeah. 12 are full reps, and the last 12 are, or 10 to 12 are half reps. Partials. And they really are. And by the end of it, my yeah. legs are only moving this much. But let me tell you, my yeah. hamstrings are massive. But they work, and again, it's a technique that works to progress that muscle failure yeah. into another dimension, you know? Yeah, 180 pounds, and only three off full stack. Yeah, three off full stack. Only years together. Okay, right, moving on. Yeah. Um, Judith Davis Roach, hi, Mark and Kim. If starting to buy gym equipment going forward, what should I prioritize? I've got the bug now, but I would rather work out at home than in the gym, thanks. 
Um, for me personally, the first thing I would invest in is either a Smith machine or a good squat rack, power rack that's multifunctional. Do you know what I mean? Because usually if you have a good rack in the house, power rack or squat rack or Smith machine, this opens up a plethora of exercises. Like you can do your shoulder press and your bench press and your squatting, your deadlifts, etc., etc. And it's, so it's a fantastic way to do it. So if it was me personally, I would get yourself a good rack, first of all, a bench, a good set of dumbbells that are, you know, are interchangeable. So if you have enough weight there to use, a bar obviously with a few plates. And then after that, you can add in maybe on the, some of the power racks nowadays have actually a cable attachment out the back of it. So you can actually get a lap pull down cable and a low row. And believe it or not, if you have that basic equipment, you can actually do a full home workout hitting every muscle group. Now, obviously, it's not going to be as uh, inept as a gym would be that covers all machines but in terms of like what you have there you've all the basic compounds covered and you've all the wee isolation ones as well so you can actually work out a fantastic home program with basically them five pieces of equipment that that's where yeah. i would start and then obviously if you want to go a wee bit um more expensive and buy a wee bit more then you've obviously like leg press machines and things like that there but like i say if you have a good squat rack a bench and the cable crossover attachment high and low then you're you're flying all day long yeah, that would have been my um, that would have been my advice as well. Okay, another question. Um, I have Facebook user, not who this is. I pulled my shoulder blade ligaments and had swelling and damage, and it is obvious on my picture. Will I be judged down for that? I had sports massage, but never for it, but it never gave up. I endured. No, to be honest with you, if it was a bodybuilding show and the and the damage was visible, you may be marked down because they're talking about symmetry. And this, you won't. At the end of the day, we're 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 not judging and i'm not trying to be off the limit but we're not judging professional bodybuilders here so like we things like that there won't matter like if i see something like that it wouldn't even take a gaze for me to look at it because the symmetry side of things although it's important we can look past a few injuries because let's face it uh, as Kim will note to you, I have probably more injuries than anybody in this group. And if everybody was taking down my injuries, I would probably end up in the disabled section of a bodybuilding show now and probably still get beat. You know what I mean? So I don't think we're going to be that strict. At the end of the day, we can see through, you know, an injury or two and where you've pushed through it. And to be honest with you, for me, that's fantastic and well done. That's what I would say on that. But definitely, I wouldn't be taking you down any points whatsoever for that. Yeah, I don't remember seeing anyone with uh, with injury, so we didn't even no. notice. Okay, here's a good one. Uh, Roshin is asking, how important is a tan? As a Casper-skinned ginger, I look ridiculous and even a basic tinted moisturizer. If I'm doing photos in the future for similar comps, is a tan necessary? Yeah, it, it depends how harsh the light is. Again, if you stepped on stage, I've seen guys in the gym that look amazing with looking white, you know, all the vascularity, all the definition in the world. These guys have barely put a coat of tan on and they step on stage onto the harsh lights and they look like Casper the Ghost, you know what I mean? Um, so therefore, it's massively important to depend on the lighting. Um, and these photos... Um, again, lighting shows up a lot, so a darker skin tone will definitely help with the results. You know, at the end of the day, again, it's part of presentation. I wouldn't recommend you going dark, dark like a mahogany door, but at the same token, a wee bit of, a wee bit of skin color definitely will help. It just shows up definition much better. Like I've seen guys putting a coat of tan on the girls as well, and literally their physique just transforms in front of your eyes, especially when you put the lights on to take photos. So yeah, definitely, I would recommend being darker in future for all photo shoots. It's definitely a must. It just, it just completely, like I say, transforms your physique and, and points out all the wee hidden separation details and intricacies, which can mean the difference between first and second. Yeah, no, it's true. And actually, I put tan on today because I've just been feeling so much better with tan. And as as you will all know, I'm on a shred and Mark doesn't want me to be on a shred, but I am. And I come in here today and I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, I have I actually have abs under these under this light and because I have tan on and like, you never you never hit the abs. Like I know, but you know what I'm saying? And I was like complaining that I'm like, oh, my shoulders are actually looking quite good here today. I'm like, maybe only because I've got tan yeah. on. Are we stopping the shred now? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, no, not yet. Four yeah. weeks, Mark. I'm gonna give myself four weeks. Mark's like, stop sake. Just eat for God's sake. And you sound like me. This is what I'm always saying. Everybody in my guys, I'm like, just eat for fuck's sake. Just, so. just, that's where she gets it from now, you know. I'm the cause of everybody getting fat probably. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh okay, so um Facebook user is saying, uh, just joined the 18 month program after finishing butt camp, I'm new to lifting. I'm wondering how to best assess when and how much weight to add over time. Is there a certain recommended percentage of weight to add every week, every few weeks? Thank you so much for your time. 
Yeah, basically, go by feel. It's all about instinctive. So the way I would normally work it out with people that I'm training is once you hit 10 or 12 reps comfortably, then I would move the weight up, um, depending on the exercise. If it's a small exercise, like a bicep curl, shoulder press, maybe only had the, maybe only add the smallest incremental weights in the gym. So the gym I would have is one and a quarter or two and a half kilos I would put on each side. If you're hitting five or six reps on that, work that up to you're able to get 10 or 12 and then add the same on again. If it's leg weights, usually the lowest I would probably put on is a 10 each side because really the legs are such a bigger muscle group that if you're hitting 10 or 12 reps fairly easily on a leg press or a squat, then another 10 each side isn't going to massively make a big difference. Do you know what I mean? So for me, upper body weights, compounds, possibly two and a half fives, isolation ones, one and a quarters, two and a halves, leg press, probably no less than 10s. Do you know what I mean? Just basically work it by feel. If you get 10 reps, say, of 100 pounds, there's no way in God's green earth you're not going to get five or six with 120. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what you're aiming for. Once you hit that five or six with 120, that's your new bench park. The goal then the goal then shifts to pulling that 120 up to 10 or 12 reps. Once you do that, then go to 140 and just so on and so on. And just yeah. make it by feeling. You know, if you put on too much weight within reason, if you're adding an incremental weight, it's not going to be too much. But if you feel the weight's too heavy, then drop it down slightly. But as long as you're making gains on a weekly, fortnightly or monthly basis, then that's all you want to do. Here, Mark, do you want to know something interesting? In America, they don't have the word fortnight. They don't two know what a fortnight is. I know, two weeks. Every Somebody said to me the day, what's a fortnight? I was like, a fortnight. And they were like, what is a fortnight? Two weeks? We don't have that <laughs> word. They are. So another, point, another point to note on that as well, you know, see if you're not gaining every week. Like if you come into the gym and you do 100 pounds 10 times and you come in the next week and you're really, really pushing and you only get 100 pounds 10 times, don't beat yourself up about it. You're not going to put weight in the bar every week. Weeks you're going to come in, you're going to be tired or you maybe didn't have a night's sleep. Your nutrition was slightly off. These things happen. You get stresses. Yeah, you get stresses from outside environment so you don't beat yourself up you just regroup come in the next day and if you're feeling good then you go for it if you're not feeling as good hold back there's no harm in coming in and uh, not going as heavy there should be no such thing as a bad workout just change your mindset whenever you're starting to not feel it and do a few wee extra volume a few wee extra reps drop the weight there's always ways around uh, doing it you should never walk out of the gym feeling beaten um, and feeling downtrodden because you haven't hit your weights just basically get back on the horse the following week and then try again yeah, there's one thing I would like to add to that, Mark, is just from, you know, our training together. Whenever yeah. there's times when I come into the gym for a full week and I like last week and I, you know, and I just feel so strong and I am just mm. strong, strong, strong. And I'm pulling big weights and I'm pushing big weights and I'm going for reps and I'm, you know, and I'm glute bridging, you know, 500 pounds and, and I'm actually more than that, 600 pounds. And so I'm just, you know, and I'm pushing and pushing and pushing and it feels great. And then, and then there's, and then I come into the gym the next week and I'm pushing, pushing, and then I have a shit night's sleep. And then I'm like, oh, and I'm dead. And at that point, you know, you, I, you don't walk out of the gym going, oh, could I have done more? Well, yeah, I probably could have done more, but at what expense? You know, you have yeah, to read exactly. your body and, and that's, I'll come into the gym sometimes and I'll say to Mark, oh, I'm really just not feeling it today. And, and I'm so honest with myself that yeah. I will never come into the gym and try and get off working. Never. I will always come into work. And if I know that I'm feeling off on my body and I need to go a little bit lighter, like I burst into tears at the bottom of squat on the squat yeah. rack. What do I remember? I burst yeah. into tears because oh, yeah. I was just exhausted on it, but I was giving them all and I was trying. And I think that that's what you really have to, it's a, it's a level of personal honesty people have to reach. Yeah. Am I letting myself off the hook or am I truly today you know and i always come mark always goes, oh, God, just give it a go just try it just give it a go and i'll get onto the squat rack and i did my first two sets it was my, my first rep of my third set i got to the bottom and i actually and it triggered something in it and i actually burst and i went up and i racked it first and first said i can't do it anymore i'd reached my threshold that day yeah. and so we were like okay and we left it and then we did the incline hack and we were fine but we didn't go really super heavy on it so i think it's it's a level of personal honesty have i let myself off the hook just because exactly. i'm letting myself off the hook or am I truly today not able to push as heavy? And that's there's a difference really between there's a difference between you know not feeling it properly because you're coming down with something a bad night's sleep and being lazy. And as long as you can distinguish between the two, and uh, you know you do a couple of sets some weeks, you feel a wee bit sluggish, you feel a wee bit tired. You do a couple of sets, you start to get into it, and then you break into a stride. Another day, like you said, you do a couple of sets and you're not there. And, you know, no matter what you do this day, it's just not going to be there. That's the days you get injured if you push too hard. You know what I mean? If you're taking the mindset, oh, I have to do this, that's the day that something bad's going to happen. Your body's telling you, pull back. Whatever the reason is, there's warning signs there. Your body is the most 
the smartest machine in the universe. And therefore, if it's telling you to pull back, you listen to your body. It's one common mantra that we use in bodybuilding, which is listen to your body. And not enough people do it. Enough. Some people end up pushing through and end up injuring themselves. Some people just end up fatiguing themselves. The central nervous system burns out and you can be in a world of shit after that. Taking I months think the problem is, though, sometimes women especially and not to be hard on my own sex but because women are very mm. in their bodies and they feel their bodies a lot more than men i know like women say to me all the time and i know we've talked about this mark they'll say oh do you train when you have your period and i'm like do you think if i was like uh mark i'm really sorry i'm not coming to gym today because i have my period yeah. mark would be like get your fucking ass over here no yeah, <laughs> like, i have some of my best training sessions yes, and I come in and I don't feel like it and then I just based it and so you know you have to distinguish between I don't really feel like it now and I yeah. and today is not the day to push and, and listen when I'm driving to the gym do I ever feel like going in and training no never I listen, never arrive and go yay let's go if you're going to the leg day feeling good and happy there's something fucking wrong with you because every time I'm going to the leg day I'm feeling apprehensive I'm anxious and just want it over you know what I mean and anybody that turns around and tells me they love leg day Sorry, folks, you're either not doing it good, or good yeah, enough or hard enough, it. or you're lying. It's as simple as that, you know. <laughs> Love it. Right. Okay. Um, I'm wondering how I can figure out how much, to, or sorry, what to eat after butt camp. I've been doing the smoothies and some of the meals. I've noticed more weight, but is it fat loss or muscle loss? I'm so lost, and I can't wait for the five-day challenge. Okay, so what does this mean? I've noticed more weight. I think but it's more it? as, as your fat gain or muscle gain, do you know what I mean? The yeah, of possibly. The so, Mark, let me give you context. In the butt camp, they start off. So, uh, you know, on all my programs, all green cruciferous vegetables are always free and salad greens. Yeah, so free. they start off two weeks on 1,500 calories, two weeks on 1,400. Uh, no, two weeks on 1,600, two weeks on 1,500, two weeks. No, sorry, I was wrong. 15, 14, 13, 12, right? So they go yeah. two weeks on 15, 14, 13, 12. Now, they're never yeah. eating that little calories because they're filling up massively on green crucifers. So yeah. they're always eating more, but those are the basic protein and carb calories, protein, carbs, and fat calories. So my question, so they are on quite low calories once they finish, and they've been doing two hours cardio a day for seven days a week, and training six days a week so their central yeah. nervous system is a bit shot at the end of it yeah. so i think that's what so people are a bit like oh how do i now go back into a healthy way of living and actually you know what i'd love you to talk about just before you start what you were saying yeah. the other day when we were chatting about you know getting the first 30 pounds off is easy the work actually starts after that can you talk a bit more yeah. about that the, the condition will obviously depend on how much weight you've got to lose getting the initial bit off the hard or the easy bit it's whenever yeah. you get right down to the bone, do you know what I mean, that st things start to stick. And that's whenever you might have to go that wee bit harder. And obviously, just taking my own experience is getting people ready for shows or even myself ready for a show. I can easily lose the first two to three stone if I've got it to lose, you know, off the bat very quickly. It's the last 10 pounds, 14 pounds even, depending where it is, that everybody struggles. And that's when you have to really, really, really dig in. So that's whenever the pain starts. Whenever the pain starts, that's whenever you're starting to get the major results. That's whenever you're starting to get leaner. That's whenever, you know, everything's going. Your body's basically saying, fuck, would you stop this? I'm in, I'm in crisis. Do you know what I mean? And that's whenever you have to push through. Um, the bottom line is, me personally, the last 10 to 14 pounds could probably take me eight weeks to get off. Um, mm -hmm. simply because your body's fighting every step of the way and you have to basically take your calories down. Even though I'm in high calories up to that point, my calories are slashed and my cardio has to go through the roof in order to get that that last bit of weight off, you know, and it's not nice. That's whenever it gets sore. That's whenever it gets hard. And basically in an element, that's whenever it gets sort of unhealthy. Do you know what I mean? Because you're basically fighting yourself on a daily basis uh, considering is this worth it or is it not, you know? So like Kim was saying there, once that's finished, you know, you're kind of, you've been training seven days a week, six days a week, doing cardio for two hours. You need a plan. That, that's the big thing. Everything in this game needs structure. It needs plan. And the problem is people have this beautiful structure plan whenever they're in a butt camp or a prep. And they run it right to the wire. They're able to stick to the cardio. They'll do this. And then they come off and they go, right, what's next? Well, what's next is you should be looking at your pictures going, well, how can I improve this? That's the first thing I ask every time I come off a stage. How do I make this better? And the next part of the equation is actually far more important than the bit that you get in because this is the bit you improve. This is the bit that you take your physique to the next level. This is where you make your gains. This is the golden opportunity for you to make them photos look fat, for you to make them photos look small, less muscular. This is the perfect opportunity for you to make all the gains that you had in your head that you didn't make the first time around. So you need a plan, you need a structure. 
And the best way to do this is basically up your calories. Now, if it was me personally out of this podcast, I would do two things. Firstly, I would drop my cardio down from two hours to one hour for the first week. Believe it or not, I wouldn't take any time off. Why? Because you don't need to. As long as you structure your training properly, you don't need any days off. Just basically back off slightly. Back off yep. the failure for a week or two. Back off the cardio down to an hour, but never stop. Because what happens is people go on and do no cardio, no training, and they eat like they've never seen food before. And all that weight just comes back on. Why? Because your body's been in that screaming position for the last four weeks, saying, please stop, please stop. And then you've now listened to it. You've please stop. So now you're hoarding food and your body's going, thank you. And it's just sucking it all back in in all the wrong places and then some. So the problem with that is you're back to square one. So what do you do instead? Have a plan. Plans are the most important and the biggest thing uh, in, in your arsenal for success. So for me, simple, an hour's cardio, cut it down to and slightly increase the calories every week. Have a cheap day or have a cheap meal at the weekends whatever you might be doing, but start going up on two or 300 calories every week. So the first week, if you're in 1,200, go to 1,400. The second or third week, go to 1,500. The next week, go to 1,600. And just slightly increase it and increase it and increase it. Once you get to a point of maybe eating three or 400 calories over and above your last thing weight, then drop your cardio back down again and sustain your calories for a few weeks at that amount. It's pretty simple, but you just need to have a plan how to do it. You should be putting as much emphasis into this the coming off is as you were coming into the boot, boot camp. That's the bottom line. If you take the, the foot off the gas here, this is where you lose out. And this is where a lot of people, whenever they really, 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 you know, put the plan in place and set it in motion, this is where these guys have the excel. This is this is basically where the winners are, 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 are gained. Do you know what I mean? It's that plan in the off season. The people are that short-sighted. They just don't see on into the future. They've just seen what they've done. And if you can sort of keep that set in mind, keep that mindset the whole way through, then I promise you, the next time you do this diet or the next time you do this program, you will look 10 times better than you did this time around. Yeah, and I want, to add, the plan. I want to add, whenever I did my first show, which wasn't with you, uh, my first three shows actually, which was in 2017, I, I didn't look anywhere near the way I wanted to look. I was happy with my progress, but it didn't look what I wanted to look like. And I, I, I finished the show. The show was on the Sunday. I didn't get home until like two o'clock in the morning. I got up in the morning with the kids and I was back in the gym at 10 o'clock that morning. And I was looking yeah. forward to the next year. And I prepped hard that whole year. Um, well, Mark's frozen there. I prepped hard that whole year. I did three shows and then I came to train with you in the middle of the two, sh two shows. And then as soon as That's we finished right. those shows, I went hard at the next year. And that those nine months between I trained with you and I started prepping for the next round of shows was the time that yeah. I built the most amount of muscle I've ever built in my entire life. My legs doubled in size okay. and because of the training. And then I finished those shows and I then I decided I wasn't going to compete again because I did the Worlds. But I went straight back into training and then my mm -hmm. goal was back into let's build loads of muscle again. It's, yeah. it's always, I've always working towards a goal. Even now I'm on a four-week shred, then I'll go back into muscle building. Yeah. And, you know, it's always, I'm always working a plan. And I think it's the And that's, that's the big point. That, that, is, that is the key. You know, you need a goal, you need a plan. And every phase, whether it's off-season, whether it's maintenance, whether it's recovery, whether it's pre-contest, you always have to have a clear goal and a clear structured path of how to achieve that goal. If you don't have these elements, then you're just basically running around in circles chasing your tail because you're going to have days that you're going up and days that you're going down. If you have a precise goal, a daily goal, a weekly goal, like a daily goal is simple. I'm going to smash the absolute shit out of legs today and squat 180 kilos. There's a daily goal. And you walk in and you smash the shit out of that 180 kilos. Daily goal cut off. Weekly goal, I want to add two pounds this week and feel amazing. Weekly goal done. Monthly goal. You know, all these wee goals that you're setting yourself are basically you setting yourself up for success. And if you continue that process process long term then and, and keep adding the variables, in, then when you get what you want to get to, it's a lot easier in the road and there's no shifts off it because to be honest with you, you know, the results are well worth it. You don't have to sacrifice massive elements of your life. As long as you have a plan and a structured approach, everything falls into place. It's true. And Mark, we have hundreds and hundreds of questions here. So I'm actually going to have to start picking and choosing. There is one thing I want to mm -hmm. say, though, before we move on to the next question, which is for anyone listening to this, we have now added, and um, you, probably, you guys have probably seen it in the groups, we've added one-to-one -one coaching sessions um, with some of our top coaches. And Mark is actually... Um, one of the coaches, he has very graciously given us his time because he has more of it at the minute because of coronavirus. And for a very limited time only, you guys can actually be coached by Mark for only, are you ready, $600 a month. So Mark has slashed his price that he would normally charge yeah. 
to be coached for $600 a month, which actually includes a weekly check-in by video, a daily check-in with Mark, a customized training plan, diet plan, everything for $600 a month. So it's like, so if you're looking for a plan and it's a, you actually, it's a cancel anytime program too. You just have to give a uh, 14 days notice to cancel um, in advance. So you can, you know, get coached for a month or for two months or for three months. And then, you know, it's not, doesn't have to be for a year. So I just wanted to put that out there, Mark, that you are actually taking on, but a very limited yep. number of clients. Yeah. It's not, yeah. Mark only has people a few pieces. Work. Yeah, people yeah, who want to work. That's, so that's, anyone here is serious a, about getting a result. Mark is the guy to it's do it. It's a fantastic opportunity for people that want to work. And, are, you know, at the end of the day, why put $600 in if you're not prepared to do the work? You know, at the end of the day, this will keep you accountable. This will yeah. give you all the answers you need. It basically takes all the guesswork out of this. I give you the roadmap of what to do. All you have to do is follow it. That's the simple yeah. bit. You know, people you send you their workout things. videos and stuff as well, Mark, don't they? So you can check their workout form. Videos. If you're not going to failure, add more and weight. Nice, nice about it. Yeah. And so guys, everybody, and Mark always says whenever he coaches people, fuck him, everybody just wants to look like you. And I'm like, but yeah. here's the thing, they can because now they have access to you. And I look you like know, me we, with Mark. We, we've spoken about this, Kim, on numerous occasions. It just takes the consistency, the dedication, the willpower, and the know-how. You put all these variables together, you can look whatever way you want. Yeah, exactly. So if anybody wants to look like me, book Mark. <laughs> and he actually does one-to-one -one coaching sessions as well. So you don't have to book a, a, a monthly coaching session. You can just book a one-to-one -one if you want to figure out a plan going forward and you don't want the future accountability and the ongoing check-ins. Um, you can yeah. book Mark for a one-to-one. -one. It's through our website. Go to thesculptedvegan.com forward slash coaching. Um, I'll put the link up at the end, actually. Um, if any of you guys want to book Mark, just go there. Right. More questions. Let's go. So Mark, we'll try and go yeah. quicker with the questions. I'll throw in a couple yeah, of quick fire yeah. ones. Um, okay, here's an injury one. I'm not limited by my muscle, but my injuries, arthritis, um, so my joints feel it before my muscles. Can you give advice about this? I'm 60. Um, it's something that I would suffer from is injuries and basically, believe it or not, arthritis in the joints and things from years of heavy lifting. Um, basically, the way I work around injuries and the way I work around any problems is pick exercises that don't hurt you. You know, I've noticed over the years and years of my lifting, there's certain exercises now that I can and can't do. For example, I don't bench press anymore. I don't back squat anymore. But I can add in exercises that suit my frame and suit my uh my longevity now where i'm at now basically you know and it's all yeah. about finding out the exercises and then the rep ranges one of the big things i can say about injury sometimes is drop the weight and up the reps do you know what i mean so up the volume there's always a way to work around these things you just have to be willing to find out put the time in and find out the exercises the rep ranges etc that works for you so for example i did like six to ten our next minutes. question mark that goes into our next question yeah. how do you work to failure of dealing with an injury so up the reps so, these days yeah, up the reps. Basically, I would have used 6 to 8 reps. Now I'm using 12 to 15. So just go that wee bit lighter and just use stricter form. You know, slow down the reps, pause the reps. Uh, just do different things that you wouldn't normally do and taxing the muscle. Keep your mind on the muscle so that you're not taxing the joints and the things that are hurting. Because let's face it, arthritis doesn't hurt the muscle, it hurts the joints. So if you can keep the joints out of most things and the hinges out of most things, then you're going to get it directed on the muscle. The only thing this takes is a wee bit more practice because you have to really, really, really think about the muscle when you're doing it. So it'll cause more damage within the muscle tissue and keep the thing off the joints. But there are way around it. My main way at the minute, like me and Kim have talked about numerous occasions in the gym, is using more machines than free weights. I just find the stability with the machines that wee bit easier in the joints than using free weights at the minute. And that's why most of my workouts now, um, if you're following on my website, is all free machine based, or all machine based, simply because I can get more movement and I don't have to worry as much about the load and the joints and things. So my change, my training has changed the last few years. I'm still pushing to failure. I'm still high intensity. I'm still going flat out. But the difference is the reps are higher and the volumes are a wee bit more than what it used to be. And therefore, there's less free weights. So there's always a way around a problem. You just have to invest in a wee bit of time to find out what works for you. Mark, I love this one because I know what you're going to say. Is there a certain breath cadence to use when training to failure? I had a problem with this, especially when counting reps. If you can talk or count reps when you're training, you're not training to failure. If you've watched Kim's videos, there's not much breathing. It's all squealing. Do you know what I mean? That's when you know she's doing it right. So I wouldn't really want <laughs> I hold my breath. Whenever things get tough, uh, you hold your breath or, or you scream or you squeal. You know, you make noises of some description, whether it's out the front end or the back end, but something's going to come out. Do you know what I mean? Just do whatever the, the fuck you can to get through it. Exactly. Shout names, call people names, shout your enemies, count whatever you want. As long as you're not passing out in the machine... And 
And I'm not saying breathing's not important, but what I'm, keep breathing, by the way, do you know what I mean? Don't stop. But what I'm saying is sometimes in them heavy sets, you're not really breathing properly. Do you know what I mean? You've, you're trying to hang on for dear life, the breathing, the one, two in the bottom and up at the top and breathing out and breathing in goes out of play. I've seen me doing a rep of 10 reps and a shrug and not breathing once the whole way through the set. Do you know what I mean? So do whatever gets you through the set. If that, if you can breathe properly, then breathe properly. If you need to shout names, shout names. If you need to basically squeal, squeal. But at the end of the day, it's about getting that weight from A to B and getting that set done. Yeah, I know. I love that. That's, I was just laughing. I was like, you're, you ain't working hard enough if you're concentrating on your breathing. Mm-hmm. Don't mean to be derogatory. Like we definitely, Mark and I will always no. tell them like it is. But truly, like, you know, people are always, you know, because I do teach in my exercise, I'll say, you know, I'll say, take an inhale and then exhale, you know, lift the bar, inhale on the lower, mm-hmm. exhale, pull up. And, you know, I always breath cue because I'm a yoga teacher. But really, whenever you're mm-hmm. like, at those final reps, you ain't but- thinking about the breath. It's the same thing about form, Tim. We've spoken about this about form. It's all lovely and well doing these beautiful form reps. But in the last reps, if you're training to failure, they ain't going to look anything other than ridiculous. You know, there's nothing pretty about them. There's nothing beautiful. You're grinding these things out at the very, very end. So breathing, form, things like that, take a back seat whenever you're trying to go to failure. And if you look at any bodybuilder, their form isn't exquisite whenever they're bringing a set of deadlifts to failure. You know, they're just doing what they can to get the set finished. Exactly. So Elizabeth Hill is asking, what you sh- what should you do to maintain, not gain or lose muscle or gain fat once you've reached your happy place with your body? It's a place I've never reached. Do you know what I mean? I'm never <laughs> happy with my body. I'm, I, I never will be happy. I think that's that's a bodybuilder's mantra is to consistently strive for more or for perfection. And then we realize perfection doesn't exist, but we still strive anyway. I think that's my mantra. You know, I always try to better myself week in, week out, year in, year out. And that's what keeps me going. That's the goals that set me. But I suppose if you have reached that place, it's pretty simple. Just stick to eating the calories you're eating to get there. So if you're eating 1,500 calories, 1,800 calories, whatever it is, just maintain that. Maintain that calorie side and just maintain your training tempo so if you're training four days a week and you're literally pressing say 100 pounds for 10 reps keep pressing 110 100 pounds for 10 reps just basically do what you're doing now and keep doing it and you'll basically stay you'll maintain do you know what i mean but at well, some stage you'll get the bug again right. and you'll want to you'll want to maintain or you'll want to get a wee bit better you know one thing i have found is like i would say i have reached my ideal body goal if someone said to me kim you can never put on another pound of muscle i would say okay well fine i'm happy with what i've got yeah. if i had to be but you what happens the more advanced you become in your training if you do you agree mark is you become more um more selective about wanting to work up different body parts so now i'm like yeah. i always want bigger quads but i want bigger glutes i've always wanted bigger glutes and i keep saying you know i want i want a bigger ass i want a bigger ass and now i'm complaining now i'm saying i'm shredding and mark's like no you're fucking saying your ass is too big i'm like but look at the size of that ass and he's like you wanted a bigger ass and now you have a bigger ass no it's too fucking big but that's that's because we're women but that's that's the beauty of it you're always looking more you're always looking better but my, my issue with trying to maintain this is where my problem falls even if i looked at myself and i thought i'm happy enough for that I'm never going to get into the gym and train easy. You know, I'm yeah. always going to want to go into the gym and train hard. Remember, because I for me, if I, do, do you know I what I mean? If I went into the, yeah, if I went into the gym and trained easy and let myself off the hook, I, I wouldn't feel accomplished. Do you know what I mean? So for me, even if I'm not gaining anymore, I still want to go into the gym and feel good. And for me, feeling good is pushing myself to the absolute limit every session because that's what releases the endorphins, the dopamine and everything else and gives you that feeling good. So for me personally, even if you're trying to maintain, you should still be trying to put 100% and the each and every workout so that you get that feeling of accomplishment. You know what I mean? You get that feeling of, of, of good. You know, them things for me are far more important than how you look at the end of the day. So just keep training as hard as you can and just keep the calories the same. And realistically, you should stay within the parameters of where you want to go. I came into the gym about a year ago and I said to Mark, Mark, I think I think my upper body's getting too big. I my chest getting too big. I think I'm going to, I'm not going to train chest as heavy and my back's getting, my traps are massive. So I'm not, I think I'm going to go easier in upper body. Mark was like, mm-hmm, okay. Mark's heard it all. Yeah. I, I think it lasted a week. It lasted a day. It didn't even last yeah. a week. By the end of the it session, the person was failure. The end of the session, the person was failure. The first set. It's like whenever you come in to me, go, my shoulders a wee bit sore today, so I'm going to take it easy in this V squat. I just go, yeah, okay, no problem. That goes heavy. And the next thing, there's four plates of side on it. Do you know what I mean? You don't even <laughs> have to talk you into it anymore. You just let you go. Because I know. It's right. as if you're trying to talk yourself on it. You're going to love this one. So is there any, I know, I, it's, I love it that I think I can predict all your answers. Is there anything special, diet or supplements, et cetera, that I need to add as an older person to grow muscle? As we get older, our body is losing muscle and fat at a fast rate. And I feel like I'm always battling nature to try to grow. So any tips on this would be great. What do you reckon, Mark? 
Um, look, at the end of the day, it all boils down to diet and training. You know, supplementation is secondary to diet. There are supplements you can take out there depending on what it is to make things easier and to make things go that wee bit like better. What? But the 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 you mean over-the-counter or under-the-counter supplements? Well, if you're a male, for example, two of the things that you could look into under-the-counter would be testosterone and obviously growth hormone because these are the two uh, hormones that are prevalent in the male body for you know staying youthful so to speak like if you go to your doctor now for example because you've low testosterone low testosterone in men has been linked to many of disease heart disease etc cetera, etc cetera, through muscle wastage and all that there so the older you get the harder you're going to be to hold on to muscle um so if you went to a doctor and basically the diagnosis of a doctor was low testosterone he would actually put you in a thing of trt or hrd depending on where you're at which is hormone replacement therapy or testosterone replacement therapy you know what i mean and what this basically is is extra testosterone put into your body in order to keep your body at a certain rate um, so that the lacks of, you know, the, 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 the traits linked to testosterone, like increased muscle mass, libido, et cetera, et cetera, is kept at a relative level. But women aren't going to take testosterone, though, and there's no, no, there's no men. No, but then there's estrogen forms as well. Do you know what I mean? So, like, at the end of the day, for women, basically, you can go the, the anabolic route and take, you know, estrogen-based things and things like that that are going to help muscle mass. But in reality... Um, if you're training harder, you need to look more about your training and more about your diet, so to speak. You know, for me personally, when you reach a certain age, we all have to sort of slow down. We're trying to slow down father time. But at the end of the day, as long as you're training to a certain level and you're eating properly, eating's the key. And if you're eating properly with a, large, a, a big, massive variety of good foods, whole veg, fruits and vegetables, sorry, whole grain carbs, et cetera, et cetera, you really, really, really can minimize you know, muscle wastage, if that makes any sense. You know, you don't really have to be going down the roads of supplements and things like that. You know, supplements like multivitamins and things like that do work, but at the end of the day, it doesn't It doesn't really uh, negate diet and training. And if you're training and dieting properly, you can work in there. An older age, definitely keeping your shape. Okay. Right, I'm going to have to do potluck and questions here because we only have five minutes left. Let me see... Um, uh, let me see. <laughs> well, there's some. Men. Can you see the questions, Mark? Yeah, I can. When you put them up, they're not there. No, I can't see them. No, until you put them can't up. Can't see them on the side. Okay. No. Uh, uh, this one's quite funny. I just have to put this up. Uh, I love your accents. If you were yelling obscenities, I'd be like, "Thank you. Keep them coming." Mark's favorite. Mark's favorite one is, "Come on, they're lifting heavier than this in the leisure center." Because <laughs> over here we have leisure centers, which are like. Um, I don't know how you would liken them in America, but they're like free, usually free places you people can go and train. You just pay in, pay as you, to use the gym. It's not like a professional. They're basically, gym. They're like, basically gems for agents. So yeah, are, gyms, for gyms, that's a, gyms for for stupid no. people. It's, I don't know. What's a Fortnite? People are asking. I've never heard of that. Um, right. Okay. And then there's people are saying it's a, oh Fortnite is a game. They're saying. Uh, <laughs> let me. Uh, okay, this is a, a funny, a good one. Maria, um, daft question. Is there any way to encourage my body to shed more evenly? No, I lose weight from the top. Right? It's always the way we lose weight from the top down. I lose body fat from the top. My back and my chest is the first thing to get absolutely shredded. And I don't want a shredded chest. I want shredded glutes and legs, but it doesn't happen. The problem for a woman is it's estrogen dominant. And basically you're going to, every woman, unless you're really, really potluck, will always hold more weight on their lower body. You know, they're always going to hold more weight on their legs and bum. And it's basically down to estrogen and things like that and how you manage it, how you get so lean. Like for going up this stage, we have ways of managing estrogen, water retention, sodium reduction, things like that. And that's really the only way you're going to get that lower bit into that area where it's completely shredded. So you can't really, unfortunately, spot reduced body fat. You're just going to lose it evenly everywhere. Because women hold it more in them places, they're always the places that are going to look that wee bit fattier, and they're always going to be the last places that it seems to be coming off. Okay. Ellen Kelly, other coaches swear by just doing three 15-minute hit sessions a week instead of all the slow, steady cardio. What's the difference? My main difference with hit is any time I've tried it, I have burnt off muscle mass. You know, my whole thing is, if you're training to failure as hard as you can with weights four to five times a week, the thought of doing three hit sessions is, you know, it's not nice. It's, it's too much. You're training that. I, I prefer keeping my energy and my high intense training from a weight training sessions because for me, this is where the muscle's built. And believe it or not, building more muscle is going to basically burn more fat anyway. The slow and steady state cardio is just going to take you into fat burning mode within the right heart rate without causing too much damage. A, to your energy levels and B, your, or three things, A, your energy levels, B, your central nervous system and C, it's just going to take fat off where you need it. It's not going to take away from the energy you need that day to do weight training. If you don't hit cardio, 
you are going to feel very, very under-recovered in the weeks, later weeks, whenever you go to do weights. I've tried it. I've tried every method possible. If you look at bodybuilders, they're always doing slow and steady cardio. Why? It's the easiest and best way to preserve muscle mass while on a deficit. If you do have cardio while on a deficit, you're more than likely to burn off muscle tissue, and this is what you don't want. So the more hit you do, the lower calories you do, the less muscle you're going to hold. The less muscle you're going to hold, the more fat you're going to keep, the more fat you're going to keep, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely not my way of doing it. Okay, Mark, we're, we're, we've been on for an hour. Can you take, like, a couple more yeah, questions? Yeah, you okay. fire away. Okay, that's fun. How do you eat for muscle gain without gaining extra fat? Do you also track your macros for muscle gain? Yeah, well, basically, in a nutshell, you're going to add a wee bit of fat. It's very, very, very hard to eat in a calorie surplus and not add slight levels of body fat. The trick in the off-season, so to speak, or muscle gain season, is to try to add more muscle with less fat. But unfortunately, you know, you're always going to have that wee bit of fat added when you're eating in a calorie surplus. It's impossible to get it spot on that all you're going to put on is muscle mass. But like I say, the trick is to add more muscle than fat. In terms of macro calculating for muscle gain, I simply just add in a wee bit more food. I don't really track macros per se. I have a set diet that I eat the same foods every day. Whenever I want to put on weight or add in food, I just add a certain amount of grams. So, for example, if I'm eating 100 grams of carbs six times a day, I might add that. I might up that to 120 grams of carbs six times a day. And for me, that's the way I would add. And then I'll, I'll, I'll basically look at that and monitor it week in, week out. If I feel I'm getting too fat, then I'll pull that back a bit. If I feel I'm not putting on enough, then I'll add in a wee bit more. But realistically, this is where I'm saying have a structured plan. If you basically have a holiday, say a year's time, and your aim is to hold or add more muscle, then don't be worried for the first six months to eight months of that of getting a wee bit fatter in order to add in a wee bit of muscle tissue. Because the more calories you eat, the more chance your body's going to have in order to gain muscle. Now, when I say calories you're eating, I'm not talking about Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I'm talking about proper good calories, you know, proper calories from good, nutritious, whole foods. If you're doing that realistically, you won't add copious amounts of body fat, but you'll also give your body enough calories in order to grow tissue. Right, Mark, what would you say to this person? Yeah, see, I'm just about take time off, eat and rest, and I have now, I feel like shit, I knew I shouldn't have. I told you that 20 minutes ago. Keep going. I know, well, that's, that's you know what she said. She said she has taken time off to eat and rest. So this person has yeah. taken time off and, to, and has been eating and resting, but now she feels like she's been doing it all wrong and she feels like shit. What's your, what's your Listen, advice? just go back on it. Don't, don't beat yourself up, right? You've made a mistake. whoop de doo We all make mistakes. Like the other day, I was dieting and had a Rice Krispie bun and a pizza. Do you know what I mean? I didn't sit sticking my fingers down my throat to try and get that out. I just said, fuck it, it's done now, put it behind me and move on the next day. So it's simple. Tomorrow's a new day. Work out a plan tonight. Work out a plan over the weekend and then just start fresh. Put your, put your calories in, work it from that, get your training up and just start looking at it as you've been rested, you've been rejuvenated. Now it's time to work your ass off and get the best results you can. So never, yeah, ever, I mean, ever let things that gap pull you down. Always look yeah, at it as a positive. Suffer. I think that one no. of the biggest things is women panic and suffer. No. Oh, I've been doing it all wrong. Oh my God, no. I had two days off and I should have only had one and I... No, it's done. Fun. There's fuck all you can do about it. You just need to get on with it and get over it. You know what I mean? The, this, the, yeah. These happen, let's face facts. I haven't been, for all the titles I've got, I've made some absolute clangers of mistakes coming up to shows and got my ass handed to me. I didn't look back and go, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done this. I learned from it and I never made the same mistake again. Learning's all about making mistakes. Do you know what I mean? It's all about yeah. making mistakes and hopefully you don't make the same one twice. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, let me just see any more questions. Just trying to see if there's any more beneficial ones before we. Um, okay, so Janice has just uh, started. She just bought the sculpt and shred. Oh no, that's not it. Sorry, wrong one. Janice has just bought the sculpt and shred, and she's just starting as a newbie. So uh, we obviously do give very comprehensive advice inside the sculpt and shred yeah. as to how to figure out your goal and whatever else, but. But what would your advice be to somebody who's just bought like an 18 month program and is now starting off on their journey? What's your advice before we go? This can, the this best advice I can just... say is follow the program to a T. Whatever it tells you to do, you do. If you do everything that that program tells you to do in 18 months time, you will look amazing. You will get fantastic results. Don't think you're an anomaly. I'm going to steal your word here, Kim. Don't think you're an anomaly. And by leaving parts of the program out, you're going to get results. You're not. So basically stick to it. So make a plan. The plan's there in black and white. It tells you exactly what to do. It tells you exactly what to eat. It tells you everything you need to know. So work your plan out. Work your macros out like you're saying. Work your calories out. Never miss a day's training. 
never miss a day's cardio. And also, like you said there, train to failure. You've hit the nail on the head yourself. You know, basically, make sure that you're following the program to your T. Make sure you're making yourself accountable. Make sure you're not letting yourself off the hook. And make sure that every time you go into the gym session, that you're walking out there going, I could not have done any more. If you follow them consistent variables right the way through 18 months, I promise you, you will be in the shape of your life. There's no other way about it. I can guarantee you that on my own life, you know. Mark, what is the best advice you could give anyone wanting to transform their body as your parting uh, parting wisdom? Uh, very simple. Just don't be looking for any magic answers. There is none. Basically, this game takes hard work. It takes dedication. It takes consistency. Now, I'm not trying to put anybody off because if you put these things into it, you can absolutely work this into your life. Look at Kim. Kim runs a multi-million dollar business. She never misses training. She shows up every day. She gets her cardio and she never misses a meal. So if she can do it, Anybody can do it. And that's not me having a swipe at Kim. That's me saying that she has put the effort and the consistency and the dedication in, and she's walking proof that you can do this. You just have to want you just have to want it. You have to put a plan in place, follow the plan to your team, be consistent, hit the variables, and realize one thing. It is really that simple. It's difficult, but it's simple. You know, there's yeah. no mad shit, there's no voodoo magic. It's just Ian, it's just Train, eat, sleep, repeat. And that's it in that order. If your training's on point, your eating's on point, your goals is on point, then your results will be on point. And that's and the can people, can people get like better results taking supplements, Mark? Or can they manipulate yeah. food? get better results and they definitely they, they can slightly do you know what i mean at the end of the day supplements play a bit of a part but they don't play the same part as training and food you know at the end of the day i can tell somebody that's basically based their life on training and food years and years ago kim like i was staying you in bodybuilding everybody came into the gym they were talking about how they were training they were talking about how they were eating now there's a massive misconception most people are coming in now talking about what gear they're taking what supplements they're using and there's very very little talked about training and, and, and eating and there's that many now we fucking stupid routines made up and these wee fads coming in a training that's actually taking that the emphasis off the hard work and people now think the more shit they take the less work they have to do and it doesn't work like that the guys that work the hardest will always prevail and that's one thing i've seen time and time again year in year out in this sport and i believe it's continually going to be that way until the depths of time do you know what i mean nothing beats hard work nothing beats consistency and nothing beats having a structured plan and following it to the letter Mark, I have to put this up just to show you this last one. This actually made me laugh, rushing. Ma and Pa giving us a proper sit down, shut up, waggy finger talk. <laughs> We're now like, yeah, and and no back doors here. Ma and Pa, right? Listen in your breath. Mark, 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 everybody, just so you know, now, not everybody here is vegan in this group, but Mark has been eating yeah. a plump diet now, Mark, for how, a predominantly plant based diet for how long? Three weeks? Four I weeks? I think it's the last four to five weeks, Kim, I've been doing it. Yeah. So it and is. How have been it? But Mark, how have, you uh -huh. how have you been getting What's your protein? That? How have you got oh, your protein, oh. Mark? All them, them wonder shakes, the friggin' uh, see some of the food I've been eating, it's actually unbelievable. Them burgers and sausages that aren't really burgers, meat, the, the, the yeah. meat alternatives, they're actually unreal. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, to be honest with you, I was very, very skeptical going into it. I really, really was, I'm not going to lie. But the last few weeks, I'm actually loving it. You know, I feel better. My blood pressure's down. We've done a thing and my blood pressure was up at about 150 over 80. It's now down to 120 over 80. The only thing I've changed is plant based. So there's, you know, so things do work. I feel better. And, you know, most of all, it's easy. And I'm not saying that badly. I generally thought it would be really, really hard. And I think that's why I was reluctant to change for so long. And I decided after talking to yourself, Kim, I'll give this a go. And to be honest with you, I, mean, I don't think I'll ever look back. And that's just being honest, you know what I mean? Um, and I am I'm happy with it. It's, it's simple. Now, we haven't got really, really gourmet with it so far. We're kind of sticking to the basics. But for me, the basics are working. So I'm content enough with that, you know? Yeah, but well, yeah, so well, Mark, well, well chuffed. Yeah, no, I'm well chuffed with you as well. But here, so before we finish, Mark, um, two things I want to say. Well, firstly, yeah. I want to say that um, people, you're, so people, sh everyone here, you should follow Mark on Instagram if you don't already. It's at the Irish Hulk underscore. So at yeah. the Irish Hulk underscore, just look for Mark Eddie and you'll find him on Instagram. He posts loads of motivational stuff and his videos and stuff every day. And um, secondly is Mark is available to hire for either one hour. So if you're like, okay, I don't know where to go from here. need someone to help me with my plan. You can go to the website, uh, go to the Sculpted Vegan website, thesculptedvegan.com yeah. forward slash coaches. Choose Mark. You can book an hour. It, it'll take you straight through to his calendar. You can book him in or um, you can book buy four, get the fifth free 
Or you can actually now, I don't think the option is on the website, but we're adding it over the next few days. You can bookmark now as your monthly coach where you get to check in with them every day and get a customized diet and workout plan as well. So he, but he only has a few, a few spots of those available. And once, once we release it, we've already had one booked. Prue, Prue today, Mark, has messaged us yeah. saying I want one of those. So there's only a couple of spaces left for that one-to-one -one monthly option where Mark is basically your coach and you check in with him every day and he does your diets and your videos and all the rest of it. Check your videos. So so that is available too um and what else i want to say is mark thank you so much for being my here pleasure, Kim. Anytime and anything you need Hi. you know i'm always here for any and anybody in the group listen i'm not as active in the group as some of the coaches but if you need anything at all just tag my name just write in mark getty on anything facebook or instagram if i see the tag if i see the question i will definitely get back to you regarding anything and listen there's no such thing as a stupid question i've been doing this for 25 years you know, so for me, anything I can help anybody with getting on the journey and help Kim with, I'm 100% behind you. And like I say, drop me a drop me a wee uh, thing, uh, uh, the whatever you call message. that. Yeah. Message, well, and I, will that yeah. I will definitely endure to help you. So like I say, best of luck for everybody that's doing these competitions. Best of luck to everybody in the future. And just like I say, be consistent, work hard, and I promise the results are there. And actually, Mark, that's a really good idea. Someone has said maybe Mark can record and sell us some sound bites to pay, play during workouts. Do you know that's actually <laughs> something we should do? Because I am, I should get, I should get Ryan to come and record us training one day. Yeah. And you can be like, come on, they're lifting lighter than this in the leisure center, or this is light for you, light, light weights, light, 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 light. Mark knows yeah. all. Mark has all the sayings. You know, we'd be like, come on, come on, I'm with you, I'm with you, come on, I'm with you. And yeah, that'd uh, be a good idea. That's what you want your head set. I'm all up for it. We should, and then we can have all these so people can like play them during the work. That would be so funny. Okay, so that was a really good suggestion. Who was that? Um, sound bites. Uh, Morgan, Morgan Holden White. Well done. That was a really good one. Um, okay, Mark, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, Mark, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No, anything at all. And like I say, good luck for everybody and best wishes and have a good evening. All right. Okay, well, thank you so much, Mark. And I'll see you. I'll see you soon. Well, did you enjoy that? Isn't Mark just absolutely epic? We got so much good feedback afterwards and people kept saying to me that they love the way Mark and I kind of bounce off each other. But you know what? I've been training with Mark now for three years and I was saying to somebody the other day that like, literally I have been training with Mark five days a week for three years. And that is a lot of time to spend with one person. In fact, I would say that apart from my husband, Ryan, I spend the most time with Mark out of anybody, which is why we bounce off each other really well and which is why you know we we understand each other and um, and we do such great Q and A's together. So I'm definitely going to have him on the podcast as a guest so that you can listen to it with much better sound. Um, and I would love to know your questions for Mark. So if you have any questions and you want to send them to me on Instagram or you just want to leave a comment, I do read all of the um, all of the comments and all of the reviews on the podcast. And I actually, you know what? I just love reading them. I always say that to you guys that I just love reading them. Anytime I'm ever feeling bad about myself. I just go and, leave, and read the reviews that you guys leave and it really does make me feel good. So thank you so much for leaving them. And talking about reviews, actually, we are just about to do the giveaway for the podcast this month. Um, I will be announcing March's winner next week on the podcast. So don't forget, if you leave me a review wherever you listen to the podcast, send me a screenshot on Instagram and you could be in with a chance of winning one of our sculpted vegan programs. Don't forget, you have to send it to me on Instagram, though, to be in with a chance of winning. Winning. So that's all for this week. I hope that you enjoyed the episode and have a wonderful rest of your week wherever you are in the world. And I will speak to you again for another episode of the Kim Constable podcast next week. Bye for now.